Hello, everybody, and a happy Monday. I am Dichotomous Prime, aka Vince, and this is the Stream of Consciousness. I am a West Indian Canadian by Tabletop Creator. I use he, him pronouns, and I do a number of different things in the tabletop space, including cultural consultation. I need to remember everything that I do because I wear many, many hats. I need more heads for all the hats I wear. Um, cultural consultation, sensitivity reading, mechanics and narrative design. However, I am also a huge fan of video games, as you can see by the uh, handsome menu next to me. And today, I believe that we are going to be checking out an old favorite of mine. Um, everyone recently is super hype about Hades. I am too. I love that game. Love me a good roguelike and love super giant games. But today, we're going to hop in the time machine a little bit. Um, we are going to go back to a simpler time. A time when no one had heard of super giant games. And. This is going to be the game that arguably put their name on the map. Uh, it is one that holds a deep, deep, uh, and important place in my heart, both as a game designer and as a gamer myself. It is the first game for PC that I ever owned. I played it on an old Lenovo laptop that nearly caused it to melt because, uh, holy crap, that was not made to do games. Uh, but it embedded in me a feeling about how to do emergent narrative well um, because I have a whole thing about how if you're going to make a game don't tell your narrative primarily through means that are not game related so cutscenes and things like that um, but before we get into it, how's everybody doing? How's the chat? I hope everyone had a restful weekend if you're someone who works the nine to five Monday to Friday grind. And if you don't, I, have, I hope that you were able to find a couple of moments of respite to rest and recuperate among whatever you need to do, work in the side hustle, work in the grind to be able to make ends meet. Uh, I see nine's, uh, Nine is sick. Nine, how are you doing? I see you're in the chat. I hope everything's going okay with you. And yeah, please, if anyone uh, is has any things on their mind, I don't know if any of you have played Bastion before or if this is a first time, I'm very interested uh, in people's thoughts on it. Um, because, yeah, no, I have, um, as I do with most things, um, I've spent a lot of time thinking about Bastion and the lessons that I learned from it um, in terms of being literate to game design and making my own games and all of those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, fellow person playing a super giant game on a barely held together laptop, I've been there with Transistor. Yeah, no, and that laptop would not have even stood a chance uh, against Transistor. Oh, look at that. My Google Chrome window has finally opened after five minutes because I'm basically, until I get another monitor set up, uh, I watch the chat through a secondary laptop. Speaking of laptops, um, yeah. The, oh, that's right. You had a, was it a knee injury, I believe? I hope that that's, uh, you've been getting lots of rest for that. And I hope that you're doing all right and the pain isn't too bad. I know. Um, I'm lucky enough to have not had anything in terms of like a ligament injury or a torn tendon or anything, but anything having to do with ball and socket joints, so shoulders, hips, knees, none of that stuff is fun. Um, and it's always real tricky to try and actually get it to heal properly, so I hope that it's going okay for you. Um, yeah, lots of stuff is uh, going on in the various different spaces right now in terms of tabletop uh video games um there's so here's interesting thought um there's there is a game that i have seen played that i kind of want to play but i don't know if it suits a let's play well it's called there is no game and it's one of those games like the stanley parable that is incredibly meta uh, and very kind of commentary, and it does so many of these think-outside-the-box things 
that I'm like, I want to highlight this and I want to show the really cool work that was done on this, but it's so all over the place structurally that I'm not sure if it would fit a playthrough or not. Um, so yeah, I'm, and this is one of those things where I'm showing my lack of experience as a Let's Player because I'm like, what do, what do the kids like these days? Do they like stuff that's more structured, less structured, all over the place? Um, but yeah, no. And then other things I've heard people say is like, listen, man, don't even worry about it. Like, be yourself. Um, have some interesting things to say. Keep your chat a safe place for people and you're good. But I'm like, ah, but then that'd be really weird for other things. And there's this whole kind of consumption with doing this streamer thing right that I'm still kind of on. So yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out right now. But November is Ori month. November is Ori month. And I'm not going to let my ADHD scatter brain throw me all over the place. That's the month for celebrating that. And I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, hopefully everyone else is too. And we'll have lots of fun with that. Um, hmm. Which, by the way, this is a good time to remind everyone, hydrate, stretch, posture check, take your meds, do anything you need to be able to take care of yourself because, you know, um, without your health, there isn't really much else that you got. So, yeah, I hope uh, everyone takes this opportunity to do what they need to do to make sure that you have as few aches and pains and headaches as possible. Um, so... Before we dive in, because I don't want to keep people from this for too much longer, um, I am going to be doing less of the running commentary, because as people who may have heard of Bastion or played it before are aware, uh, it has a pretty amazing narrator, and one of the awesome ways that it does storytelling is largely through that narration that is triggered by as you kind of move through the map. So I don't want to... Oh, look at that. And Hera's playing Monster Hunter World right now. Hello, Hera. Um, I don't want... I want to not interrupt that as much as possible. So I'm going to try and wait as much as I can to get to hub worlds or areas where I can speak without having that be interrupted uh, in order to have my various commentary. Because, you know, it's something that's really well done in the game and I wish that more games would do. Uh, yeah, Logan Cunningham. For the longest time, I'm like, is that, is that, uh, and now I'm gonna forget his name, Ron Perlman. I could have sworn, I'm just like, Ron Perlman, nope, but Logan Cunningham, that's, I, amazing voice, absolutely amazing voice. I'm super glad that Supergiant is, uh, pun not intended, is still giving that man work and, you know, generally having an in-house cast that they bring back again and again because, uh, the life of a contractor is scary, and the most that they can do to alleviate that stress is pretty awesome. Okay, so, without further ado, I believe that it's time to go on in. I've got subtitles all headed up, so, um, if, uh, folks, and please let me know if you can't hear the soundtrack, because the soundtrack is fucking baller, and I hope that people are able to enjoy it. Um, but now let's just dive on in, I think. Uh, normal mode. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Oh, it's taking me back already. Ground forms up under his feet as if pointing the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. Alright, B to attack. Jeez, I forgot this stuff. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. In the calamity. That'll survive it. Oh man, it's a gas fella, forced out from underground. The kid pops him good. Starts to feel his bruises though. Uh 
how slow you move in this game. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. I've got to hold her still to spin up the chamber. I think at some point I'm gonna see so, for those in chat, are you seeing... There seems to be an almost imperceptible little line of static going up the diagonal of the screen. Um, let me know if you can see that, because I might have to do some adjustments. Uh, iterative game design. That's... I definitely do want to get into that, Nine. It is a little bit more of an in-depth discussion um, that I... I might have to She's dedicate some time to it. By now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to mess with some graphics settings. I think. This is reminding me of the Numb Skulls from Hades a lot. Same, same hat, same design. Or similar, at least. Yeah, that's strange. I haven't had that phenomenon with the graphics as I have before. He sets foot inside one of Salambia's famous watering hole. Inside's old Oh, but it's, it's gone tender. now. All right, that's the interesting. Calamity got him before his drinking did. <laughs> It's really interesting how you can see the the DNA of a lot of the animations that Supergiant still uses in Hades. In like, if you look at these gas fellows, and then you look at the wretches from um, Hades, that axe animation is pretty much the same thing because uh, animation is expensive. gone good i don't know if that's gonna keep happening but uh it seems to be fine for now i don't feel like smashing his statue that feels mean and i can't go back out so yeah it seems to be gone so won't worry too much about it for now. Look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. Oh, but it's back now. Okay, that's no, and now it's gone. Uh, I'm very confused. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. Is the emergency defenses still work? 
bad news is they ain't it for the kid. Don't want to fall off stuff too much. Oh, that's right, I forgot that they can hit each other. Right back at you. The weight of my heart in a game is definitely a good counterbounce. Like, if you can reflect shots, you've already half won me over as is. He finds the distillery right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. One sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid'll feel like a new man. Uh, extra fizz, stray fragments. Here we go. Okay, and it's just the introduction to that, right? The arsenal is where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. Oh, hey, follow my blade. How are you doing? Yeah, no, um, I, it's definitely going to be getting used to it again because th I've seen a couple of people say, and they're not incorrect, that uh, Bastion and all of the other super giant games almost feel like the uh, building up the DNA that makes Hades as um, addictive of a game as it is. Um, so yeah, no, it's definitely going to take some time getting used to it. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for dropping by the stream. Uh, let's see, what do I want to update? Uh, let's see, so, so I've already got that, so I can just, okay. Excellent. And then all of this, cool. Nope, so I need to... Dancing shot, bouncing from target to target. I don't hate that. All right. Some of them squirts birthing like crazy Whoop. in a couple of corn bins. Right, I forgot those are for... Oh. There we go. There we are. Okay, that's a little bit better. my bouncing shot. Cool, cool. We're getting used to it. <laughs> Whoa, okay. That was that was cheap. I don't want to do that. Come on. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. Or I could just have them miss me. Whoop! Yeah, this is closer to... Whoa, okay. Falling off is not optimal. Come on. There we go. Why did I switch my controls? I shouldn't have assigned something. There we go. I also love me a good power shot. Get 
takes a chunk of alloy, smell of barley, and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. Kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. Forgot how much they kind of throw you into this right off the bat. We gotta get rid of these spawners. There we go. Yeah, you two are going to be the ones who beat Batman, of course. Like, they do not screw around. They just throw enemies right at you. Ooh, check in on chat. Um, interesting. Doing good. Today has been great. Couple sales. Got a few people in the Discord. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, uh, Follow My Blade is Nick Butler, who is the uh, chief designer for Tidebreaker RPG. He's actually just put up the core document for that game um, for everyone to play. Currently free as a Google Doc. Um, I already said that. All right. But yeah, uh, if you've ever wanted a really cool cinematic art action RPG, Nick's been working on this for a long time. There's a lot of really cool focus on stunts uh, and just generally telling narrative through stylistic, exciting combat that if that's your jam, you should definitely go follow him on Twitter. I believe he's at the same uh, at, at FollowMyBlade, and you should be able to find the link through there. So there you go. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. Hey, the line's back. I don't know why. There we go. Okay, yeah, no, I should run. I should really, really run. Yeah, we've been dealing with this weird static line. I don't know where it came from or why it's here, but it just kind of shows up occasionally. see something stranger still his mind races the graphics card yeah it's this is quite literally the least graphically intense game i think that i've run on this computer so it's really strange um i'll have to check in and see what it is maybe if we take a break i'll take a look at it but yeah i'm not entirely sure what the situation is um did anybody else survive so Thus far, we haven't seen a whole, whole lot, but I want to take a moment to kind of do a bit of a development flashback here in terms of where games were with Supergiant at this point. Because it's not as if there weren't games that existed before this that did the, the narrative thing. You have things like Prince of Persia, um, but other than kind of the occasional all right we've hit a cutscene all right my character just died like in prince of persia you'd be like that's not how the story goes um this is a game with a surprisingly small amount of dialogue um and much of the cues for the narrator are reaching certain points in the level but there isn't really an indicator that ooh, look this is something really important when it comes to the story so it's almost like they've set up the the lines that um the gentleman who i've forgotten his first name if it's ron cunningham or john cunningham if someone can remind me for just a moment um the lines that they've given mr cunningham are all very kind of like you know you know the distiller and his wife didn't make it and all that sort of stuff but you're like distiller wait because you have all of these things around the level and you're trying to determine what's important so it's less 
pointing a giant golden arrow and being like, this is the story, this is what you should be paying attention to visually, it kind of give you gives you a hint of that. And then you as the player, as you're going through these levels um, that are the existing world that is being reconstructed after this devastating calamity, um, it puts the impetus in your hands to be able to go around and kind of experience these things and wade into the narrative without kind of being strung along. Um, and there's a way in which it does it that lets you kind of immerse yourself in the world rather than, you know, you're sat down in the middle of a theater and you're like, no, this is what you should be paying attention to. And the ability to guide yourself uh and kind of direct your own experience rather than being led along by the nose while also being given the structure of the narration and the little lore bits that go along with the items um is something that i think contributes very strongly to how powerful the narrative is because with uh video game narratives I feel a lot like it's like comedy, where in comedy, uh, and uh, Jordan Peele and Keenan Michael Key have said this in interviews before, is that comedy a lot of the time is you don't want to take the audience 100% of the way there. What you want to do with a good joke is take them about 70% of the way there, and then they bring themselves the other 30%. And the reason for that is, one, you show that you have respect for your audience's um, intelligence and capability in that you're like, you're capable of figuring this out. Um, so it kind of shows that you have a respect for them as equals. Um, but then also figuring stuff out for yourself is fun and engaging. And whether it's a joke or putting together a story for yourself, as in Bastion or games like Dark Souls, um, it can be very rewarding and makes you attached to something, maybe in a way that you wouldn't otherwise. Um, and you can absolutely just kind of do that in traditional narrative, or at least there's a larger threshold for that. But I would say that if you're making an interactive narrative like Bastion or like any video game, it behooves you to go, well, this is interactive. So why don't I let someone interact and find this narrative for themselves and join me in experiencing it? Um, and the narration in this is one of many tools they use to do that. So, let's continue. Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. <laughs> There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest, enough to point the way to the cores. All I tell him is to set that core of his on the monument there, then watch. Oh, thank you very much there, uh, Nick. I appreciate the contribution here. It's very much appreciated. Uh, so, for those of you who are unaware, basically, this game surrounds a world that has gone through a cataclysm and the world has been shattered. You are attempting to put it back together. Uh, let's see. Uh, video Innuendo Studios did on Bastion surfaces back to the forefront of my brain, and I'm again reminded of how masterfully your relationship with the narrator was handled. Absolutely. And I haven't seen that, but I'll put that on the list there, Nines, to go check out. Just like that, the Bastion comes alive. Starts growing again. Growing stronger. Kids gotta put its power to good use. Now the Bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. I also think there's something very powerful about the game setting up from the very outset a story about construction and building. Uh, I think that is... Um, I think that's powerful. I think building something and being able to see your work 
in a very tangible visual way um, is another way to really kind of invest yourself. Get on this, what to build. Uh, enhance one's natural abilities, weapons and secret skills. Uh, let's try the arsenal, sure. Mirror shields. Uh, blocks automatic attacks for the time. Eh, that's less fun. I think I'll go with the whirlwind though, because that one is good for a good AOE. Okay, I don't think that there's any more that I can do here for a time. So let's head into the first level. Right, the Proving Grounds. Oh, so much of this game is coming back to me now. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the biggest dump in town. Scumbag alley. Whoa, okay. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. Okay, yep. Yeah. To go away. And there he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. Sir, 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 thank you. The calamity ain't done much for Gershel's sunny disposition. Ah, jeez. Said old Gershel wouldn't go without a fight. Forgot just how small they can get before they actually fully die. <laughs> the rest of the path is gone for good, and his city crest won't bring him back. And nothing over here. Alright, I guess we're going in the other direction. No core. Yeah, the, that's one thing there, uh, Nick, that I have noticed. Just the, the speed of the movement does feel a lot slower. But then you'll also notice um, if you don't have any speed bonuses or anything in, in Hades, I found that um, visually... Okay, so let's watch the kid move and watch how fast his feet move. It feels like he's kind of on a treadmill. And I found that Zagreus has that same feel at times um, in he in heads Hades. For the short steps. Won't be no field trip this time. Kid ain't ever seen an elephant squirt before. Forgot you could shoot through them. Just gonna spawn infinitely? Is this what we're gonna do? No? Okay, cool. Hey! He's come back and digest just about anything. Except for this. It's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. Right. Should take this out first. Everything about my gaming instincts tells me take out the spawner first. Whoop! I'll admit, I probably never use the squirt lure after I first get it. Squirts don't make the best of friends, but they can be useful at a pinch. <laughs> Them squirts just don't know when to quit. <laughs> Want my bow back. Parry physical attacks, that's right. Is where the gas for the foreman used to live. Tended to his flock. Yep, come on. Alright, alright, okay, okay. 
sir, sir, sir. Garment, garment, Jesus. What kind of sounds am I even making? Uh, interesting. <laughs> and there it is. But it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. All right. Okay, come on. Show me the enemies. Thank you. Ah, stuns, stuns. Whoa, okay, 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 okay. Alright, y'all, this is super not cool, and I do not appreciate it. Okay, now the question is whether or not I can actually block that, and how far away I have to be to actually do it. Because I'm just getting juggled now. Come on. Nope, can't block it. Good to know. Alright. So, can I only hit him? Actually fight them, but apparently not. All right. He hears the whole place groan, but it's too tough to follow. All right. Might as well check the other side streets before leaving this hole. Are there more spots up here? I don't think so. All right. <laughs> over here? Nope. Anything else over here? Nope. He heads for the east side, where windbags used to keep the local forge. They ain't pleased. No coal or alloy left to pay for the remnants. Oh, I can counter. Okay. It's just the... The visual cues in terms of it's where the hitboxes are are not nearly as precise as previously. Uh, upgrade. Yeah, we're definitely going to upgrade that. Uh, draw speed. Yeah, good no. length of me power shot, definitely. Flows like new again. And crit, uh, punch through anything. 50% damage, yeah. Yeah. Kids like mom and friends looking that. fit to keep on fighting. And I don't have enough good bits. Wait, can I break this? He's ready to go, and his ticket out's right where it started. And I'm just gonna pick that up, because why not? I also like how Odd place to find the likes of Percy the Snitch. I mean, Shh. okay. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his. <laughs> Percy, Percy the Snitch got got. All right, dude, come on. There we go. Yeah, I always thought that the kid was a term of affection. Mm -hmm. Parking lot behind the Wendy's. Yeah, no. 
It, um, especially when the parking lot is falling apart into an abyss, it's especially dangerous. Um, the windbags used to be all right. Then the calamity took the floor out from under them. Hey, little guy. How's it going? Okay, I'm going to switch back out for my bow. That's my solid go-to. Uh, and we're going to switch that out. Uh... Whirlwind. There we are. And we got another building. Only fair he decides what we build next. It also feels very well, I mean I guess Darkest Dungeon feels very Bastion since Bastion came first, but um it reminds me a lot of building up the town in Darkest Dungeon, so you have your hub world that you're establishing. Uh, let's see. Weapon upgrades. I forget what's in the distillery, so we're gonna find out. Makes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Uh, stray fragments. One chance to carry on when defeated. Below 33% health, 33%. I don't think I might save that for later, but we'll go Cinderbrick Stout for now. Cinderbrick Stout sure goes down smooth, then stays in your gut like a rock. We're gonna try and do the proving grounds with the Pick breaker's bow, I think. Course while the kid was out. <laughs> sure. See if I can do this halfway decently. The breakers used to come here for target practice. They used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. Alright. He's focused. He's armed. And he's off. Not how long the power shot takes. It's definitely not nearly as fast as Hades. It ain't done bad at all. Okay. Because there is actually a flash, it just takes way fast or way slower to do it. Can I just reset? We'll try, I'll do one more time. Ain't sure. Enough at the breakers and then we'll move on to something else. So let's see if I can just... Come here. Thank you. I'm going to try and go across. It takes practice. That's not bad. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Now, I don't know if I can angle it to hit that other one. Nope. Alright. There we go. And it'll actually tell me, too. Okay. Cool. For real, though? There we go. Oh, I, just, I didn't even see that one at the bottom. Well, rip me. No? Okay, cool. Well. <laughs> he returns with some of the materials we need. I can do some of that stuff off screen, I think. <laughs> can I... Right. Oh no, the f 
Well, I don't have the forge yet. Okay. Well, I'll get another core and then we'll upgrade that, I think. <laughs> Same mechanic, but through narrative and flavor text, it achieves different feels, which is very neat. Yeah. I mean, I think that there is... Um, your your town in say a darkest dungeon for instance is kind of your your very brief refuge and i think part of that is because like you are encouraged to look at your your champions your heroes whatever you want to call them um as a means to an end as a resource as nick pointed out uh you can't really win that game without being a bit of a dick uh, whereas the very few NPCs that you will meet in Bastion, you are encouraged to have a relationship with, whether it's the narrator or some of the very few others that you bring to the actual Bastion itself. Um, so you are building something together that is lasting in a way that the, the world itself feels as though it is not, literally because the ground will crumble under your feet or is just like so easy to have this feeling of it slipping away even as you're walking over it. Um, so there's a lot of visual metaphor for kind of building community and building something lasting and meaningful um, that is powerful enough that the game doesn't need to tell you that explicitly. Uh, whereas, say, in Darkest Dungeon, it's the, you know, oh, wow, 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 it nearly broke my will to live. Uh, go have a drink, whatever. We're going out to the horrible fish lair tomorrow. Stop whining. Um, and so, yeah, it is very much the kind of, like, little bit of a moment's respite um, and utility, whereas I feel as though something like this with Bastion is um, precisely what you were saying, Nines. Um, oh, hello, Jimmy the Cannon. Nice to see you. Happy to have you here on the stream, and thank you for dropping in. How are you doing today? Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Sundown Path and... Yeah, the Melting Pot. Sure, let's see. What do we got over here? In better days, the Melting Pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. That doesn't sound very nice. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. I forget whether or not these are destructible or not. They are. Okay, cool. The last of things hurt like a broken heart. I just need to not, you know, get stabbed by the titular stab weeds. Whoa, whoa. He's a motherfucker. Cute. Should have brought that machete. Figures it ought to be deeper down. Ah, oh, for real, dude. Come on. Here, nope. Just more stabbing. Cool. I've also got a little bit of controller drift here. That's probably gonna make this a bit of a pain in the butt, but oh well. We'll work through it. There we go. Cool right. stuck inside one of those fancy cages. Several stuff lying around. Oh, hey, look, explosives. Throws a switch. Now, what could possibly go wrong? All right. Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. That's cool. I need to collect these dollary dues over here. Start falling in. Attack my commas. Attack and defend your master. Scumbags don't I 
notice they also kind of refined a bit of the aiming system in this. Or rather, Supergiant has refined their usual aiming system they use since this game. Okay, that's fire. Fire bad, as Frankenstein's monster has taught us. Cool. Troubles to be sure. Oh, yeah, you know. I'm also noticing that they've kind of refined a bit of a formula for these like multi-stage fights to where the pacing drags a lot less in more recent games. I mean, luckily there isn't much of, like, a grindy element to this game, but, like, the, the different phases that you'll have in fights can kind of not especially be able to tell how close you are to victory. They can just be like, alright, cool, another one, awesome. Yeah, 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 there's stuff falling from the sky. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. Oh, or, you know, fuck me and I can't go that way. <laughs> I still remember the look on his face after that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're on with Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary is one that I have not tried, but it's been on my list for a very long time. I've been wanting to try Blasphemous. I really like the art style on that one. So that might be one that I'll look forward to in my spare time. Uh, Salt and Sanctuary, SNS is fun. Need to get back to that. Two, Hunter, Sword Whip, and a, a sword. Sword Whip? Is that like Ivy and Soul Calibur sort of thing? Or is that something different? Um, let's see. Get it to start working. There's no way to. Do, 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 do. Lots of technical talk in a game I haven't played yet, but I will. And then maybe I'll be able to contribute to that discussion. Uh, kid scales up hard. Weapon upgrades get silly. Yeah, no. I, um. I have played it, it's just kind of one of those things of like the feel of, it's less it's difficult so much as like, there doesn't feel as though there's a delineation of stages quite so much uh, in terms of various different cues that you get. Like for instance, a lot of the enemies that I'm facing there is like, this one's slightly greener, this one's slightly bluer, and I'm like, all right, cool. Um, some of these are helping me and some of them are not but there's a lot of visual clutter um, that, once again, this is kind of like, you know, going back to an artist and critiquing a drawing that they made 15 years ago, quite literally. So, you know, this is not me being too harsh, but it's just interesting to watch the trajectory of how these things have been kind of clarified uh, and generally made 
for better user experience in their future games. Um, oh, uh, I that just jogged my memory. Uh, someone, I think it was you, Nines, was talking earlier about how they redid a lot of animations for, say, Pyre. Um, but that also that also tracks uh, because Pyre is a completely different genre of game. Um, it is also, uh, funnily enough, it is the only super giant game that I have not played because I saw it and I'm like, I respect the ambition to do something different with kind of this weird, like, soccer to save the world sort of game that you have. But I'm also like, I will, I tried the central gameplay loop a little bit and I'm like, I'm not going to enjoy this, so rather than play a game that I know I'm not going to enjoy and rag on it, when it's not really bad, it's more my problem because it's not my particular cup of tea, I'm like, I'm going to let the people who enjoy this enjoy it, and I will celebrate their joy and not, like, I don't want to rag on something. Because, you know, it's if it's not my thing and I don't have something constructive to criticize about it, I don't want to spend a whole ton of time yucking someone's yum if you know what i mean as much as i hate that expression um but yeah it makes sense that they would redo those animations for something uh that serves a different purpose perhaps folks voyage across the boundless sea to found salamia it was good living here for a while <laughs> let's see <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, my head is full of words, and I, uh, some of them are a bit more, uh, well, you see, my, I say my head is full of words, and then I can't sort through them to find the one that I want to use now, so, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Need fixing up in this world. Okay, so I do right think here. that we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do that, and then. Yeah, we'll just do damage for now, because I might go back and do that breaker trial again. Uh, and see if that works, because I can only choose one of these at a time, right? Uh, scumbag, 50% draw speed. Actually, yeah, here, I'll do that, and then I'm going to go... So something nasty is for the gun, something sharp is for that. Uh targets over time okay we'll stick with that and i'll do the breaker bow one i think <laughs> the no clip doc about pyre how it contributed to what super giant have achieved by now thank you nine you are bringing it with the recommendations today and i respect it i will definitely go and check that out i something that i've been finding oh and oh also thank you very much for the follow jimmy cannon uh i did i only got that notification just now but i appreciate you thank you very much uh have i gotten any other notifications because there's a little bit of a delay here nope okay we're good um so yeah and um something i've been finding because uh and nick uh you you've seen this is i is i am a um let's see i have mentioned in our tabletop top tabletop chop shop discord uh, that I'm a big fan of War Stories, which is the Ars Technica series that they run on YouTube. However, I do find one series hella white, yo. Fucking just like, please, please, dear God, like studios put more non white people in charge of your stuff. Please, I beg you, I need to wear shades sometimes. Uh, so that's one thing. Two, a lot of the older stories are very like based on technical limitations which i don't have the knowledge of different programs to be able to uh maybe appreciate and it's always like oh well this program uh, actually it, it could only render these many bodies at once but we found a loop around it's like dude i don't care do i i'm sorry i'm sure that there are people there is a demographic labeled people who care and i am not in that demographic um however um there are a couple of them like subnautica which um is very interesting because they wanted to make a whole game that was non-violent 
they wanted to have no guns in that game and the whole challenge of building a game that was a compelling gameplay loop without that uh, was very challenging uh, so I am all about more interesting uh, game development um, documentaries and things like that I'm a big fan of Raising Kratos which is the uh, hour and a half documentary that's on YouTube about the 2018 God of War game I'm a huge fan of that um, so yeah, thank you very much for the recommendations there, Nye. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. There's, um, actually, there's a horror documentary that I had recommended to me recently called Horror Noir, about the, con the contribution of black filmmakers and actors in horror, um, that I have yet to watch, but it's on my list because I am also really, really interested in that. Um, and just, you know, what is scary to you is very, and I mean you generally, not you specifically. Um, things that are scary are very much defined and influenced by your own life experience. So the things that have been scary to predominantly white folks who make horror, horror movies, um, have been very, um, ironic use of terminology here, but very colored by their experience. Um, and so you were getting these very innovative, really cool horror movies by folks like Jordan Peele uh, and by, you know, Monkey's Paw Films. Uh, and yeah, it's definitely something that I'm interested in. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for the follow uh, there, Fall on My Blade. I appreciate you very much for that. Uh, so here, let's check out this uh, Breaker's Proving Ground and see if I can actually make this happen. <laughs> All right, let's give this another go. Did I get all these ones? Nope, not quite. All right, that's cool. There we are, that's what I like to see. Nope, that's not the one that I wanted. Can I cancel? I think there's a way for me to cancel. Alright. Cool. There we are. Perfect. Some fancy and breaker volley. Look at that. Got myself a new toy. I'm happy about that. Don't believe it when he says he passed the breaker's challenge. Motherfucker, I got breaker volley. I've been putting together this whole thing. You ain't been doing shit. Don't tell me what I didn't didn't do. I'm so, I'm honestly so in two meetings NDS about. Oh, you're uh, in two minds, I'm guessing, is what you're trying to say there, Nine. They're very fun, but my brain just doesn't let me pass up on the harder ones until later. Yeah, it is... It is kind of one of those things where so much of user experience is properly communicating things to the player. I talk about this a lot with Monster Hunter World, honestly, because I love that game. It, eh, not super good about communicating things to players. Because if a game was like hmm, I probably won't be able to do this until later. Then I'm like, cool, my dude, I will come back to this later. But if it doesn't explicitly tell me that, then I'm like, there's there's a thing to this. I need to figure this out. And I will just hyper fixate on it for like 15, 20 minutes or longer until it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, you can't do that until you have this. I'm like, oh, cool. Thank, thank you for telling me that. Uh, I'm super glad that I didn't spend my time on that. So something that I think more games and more studios could maybe stand to work on a little bit more is clarity of communication, which is not a super, like you say that in terms of what people are excited about game design for, and it's not super sexy. It's not like real exciting, but technical writing and clarity of communication and intent um, makes for sexy experiences, um, both IRL, and in video games, uh, because you get that clarity and that security to be able to 
figure out what it is that you want to do and feel confident in that, that it's going to be an enjoyable result. Um, so yeah, no. Clarity of technical writing and communication in games it makes a world of difference, which is why I'm super finicky about my grammar when I'm writing rules, uh, as I am writing, say, the words of creation rules right now. Uh, okay, so I don't have anything to... Uh, I don't think I have anything to upgrade right now, so we're going to... Oh wait, do I? Do I have something for... No, I don't have anything for the hammer. All right. And that's the Bastion, Proving Ground for that. Don't really need it. Uh, the Sundown Path. Oh, I think this one's super sad, so I might have to shut up for this and let the story take it. Couples used to walk the Sundown Path. The kid ain't here for pleasure, though. Gentlemen, gentlemen, no, not cool. There you go. I think I'm just gonna get like stun locked going through this. Wow! I got dropped on it while it was collapsing. That's cool. See the path was intended for the leisurely stroll and such. Yep, yeah, come on. Bye bye. Thank you. actually know if these are going to collapse or not. I don't think they are. Come on. I don't know if they're going to come back. Nope. Oh, really? Well, if we Shoot your goop at me? Straight disrespectful. The question is, who else could have taken the core? Come on. There we go. Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Yeah, it turns out IEDs are uh, a real powerful weapon. Come on. Oh, really? I didn't get that in time? There we go. Time you all want to blow that up. Thank you. There we go. Even gas fellas need some 
shut up. step on one of those again they're gonna drop and yeah, screw it yep come on there we go gotta get the cookies though could have survived the calamity. So we didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. So that's an interesting game design choice. Because, okay, because we have our whole sort of, we're looking for cores, there's a core detected here. So this is something that I kind of want to draw a parallel to when you're GMing a tabletop game. Um, one of the things that, um, if you've ever played Blades in the Dark, uh, one of the, first and foremost, really fun game system. I recommend the Forged in the Dark systems. If you ever want to run something like heists uh, and just kind of like criminal operations type things, there's a couple of different kind of subgenre hacks of them that are really cool um, but one of the cool things that it does it has a specific GM section with a lot of tips for uh, game masters and one of the tips that it has is that at the end of the heist at the payoff give the players what they earned um, because one thing that especially if you're uh, perhaps someone who's played a lot of say Dungeons and Dragons is that uh, and I've fallen prey to this instinct myself, is to, to fall prey to the urge to kind of pull the rug out, but as a matter of course, and going like, haha, they said that you were going to pay you this, but they actually are just going to screw you over and kill you. Um, and it's kind of, it's a violation of expectation. Now, violation of expectation is not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of the time it can be a very good thing. Uh, but if you are kind of having this expectation of something positive and you get something negative instead um in game design it can be really tricky because ultimately you want the twist of a game to eventually circle back around to a net positive because while in game you will have these conflicts that might be negative experiences for your player characters you know ah things are trying to kill me all the time whatever uh for your players themselves you ultimately want people to walk away from a table feeling like they've had a good time um so when you have that moment of deciding to pull the rug out from someone it's usually a good idea to have something as a net positive to counterbalance that um you know oh you didn't get this reward but you have this uh this other thing like you made an ally or you have something really cool happen separate from that in order to make up for it the reason why i say that is that's a very interesting thing that just happened with um that level um and i'm interested to see because you know we had a couple we got a new tool or new special ability um, but that's happened in levels where we didn't have the expectation of a core either. Um, so it's interesting. It's a development of the story because there's that twist of, oh, there's someone else, who could it be? Um, but tangibly, it's kind of a net negative. So it's not something that I really kind of picked up on that pattern before because at the time that I originally played this, I didn't really have the language to really speak about it more clearly. So that's an interesting pattern. I'm going to see in terms of design choices whether it makes up for it. And uh, I'm going to take a quick sip of water, which for those of you out there, take this as a good chance to, to hydrate real quick. You know, take a good stretch, take your meds if you need to take your meds, all that sort of stuff. 
Alright. Resuming the game. Ain't always much to say. Fair enough. And now we have two things that I don't have stuff for. Alright. And the arsenal is pretty much just for switching weapons. Uh, let's see. I do think that I'm going to stick with the trip mine for now. Because it does a ton of damage and I can lure people into it. Alright. Uh, let's see. Setup and payoff is very versatile. Narrative instrument. It's also super effective on our reptilian brain stuff. So if we strongly felt like we got dunked on, uh, if we were expecting something, feels more like a betrayal than if something bad would just randomly happen. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's real tricky. It's it's one of those things that really goes back to um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I do have my academic background is in psychology as well as philosophy, and it is kind of. As much as we talk about story and immersion and everything, it really kind of takes me back to these very kind of uh, buttons and levers and incentives sort of responses. Uh, and there is something to be said about the nature of certain incentives and reinforcement schedules and things like that. But it's interesting every so often where you go like, that was intended to make me feel good in the game, but it didn't. Why didn't it make me feel good? Why am I irritated right now? And to be able to trace that back to something very kind of primal in the way that you were saying there, Nine. Um, and yeah, it's it's very interesting the different uh, pulleys and levers on which our positive and negative attributions of experience tend to lie, uh, especially when it comes to game design that where you're trying to curate a certain expectation and a certain experience. Uh, okay, so moving on to the Hanging Gardens. The dead welcome him with open arms. All right. This is the one that I'm going to be more quiet for. So I encourage everyone who hasn't played the game or has it's been a while since you played the game uh just kind of wade in and experience this one with me because this one was one that stuck with me when i initially played the calamity took everybody after all kids he's a plane with frozen faces all around Folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. It was someone like him. Sees him there agape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop no matter what. He's got so many questions. So it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. The 
Jawsons. They can make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Huh? Kid finds proof enough. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? says this. We have to go. Please. Whew. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Salt. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. Kid and I introduce ourselves in kind, both to him and to each other, for the first time. All right, so that's pretty heavy. The thing that gets me about that level is how much emotionally and narratively it manages to communicate with so little. Um, so, uh, yeah, we actually just got through, I think it was the hanging, it's the hanging gardens, uh, I forget specifically, but, um, it's one of the more heavier areas of the game, where you see a lot of the statues of people who have passed because of the calamity. Um, there's a, there's a feeling of loss, um, and a weight of loss that, I think is very significant, and a lot of games don't manage it very well, but Bastion did, and I want to talk a little bit about why. Um, there are a lot of these points in games where games want you to care about an NPC, or the story, or something that's going on, and you just start skipping through the dialogue and be like, okay, tell me the thing I need to hit, tell me the thing that I need to get, tell me the, the MacGuffin that I need to actually get this. Um, but the, the level that we just went through has a method of just centering the loss and what has been lost in a very core way, um, pun not intended because we did pick up a core at the end of that level, um, there's um, the fact that you just kind of go through and you don't really get anything but these little tidbits of, you know, this person, they didn't make it. Um, this person, they never got to see what was outside of Ceylandia. Uh, this person, you know, this little kid who liked to play with the birds, they didn't make it. This, this man and his son, their family didn't make it. Um, and there's, I forget specifically the source of it, but there is a writer whom I remember reading something on Twitter and going, if you want to convey the depth of a tragedy and the weight of what was lost, you don't go big. You don't go this many people die because that's not a tragedy, that's a statistic you go small you go you know the old sort of a single like a, a burned doll that is left at the side of the road or a small photo or you know someone's journal entry of i'm so looking forward to this thing that we're gonna get to do when i see you again and there are these little glimmers of humanity that when we lose something 
those are the things that I think hit most deeply that we lose. It's that connection, it's those relationships, it's the potential for what could have been. There's an old line from my favorite Western, Unforgiven, um, that uh, Clint Eastwood's character, Will, William Money, uh, says um, to basically his, his young companion for the movie is like, has killed someone for the first time. And he's had this whole idea of, like, I'm gonna be a badass cowboy, gunslinger, I'm gonna kill 50 men, like, all that sort of stuff. And he's shot someone dead for the first time. And he's very distraught about it, of course. And Will Money says something, and it's my favorite line in any Western, and it's one of my favorite lines in all films. He says, uh, and I'm gonna probably misremember this, but in essence... Uh, it's a hell of a thing killing a man. Take everything he's got, everything he's ever gonna have. And I think that in addition to losing that humanity and those lives, the loss of a potential future of any hope or love or anything, it... The chance for things to get better, even if they're bad right now, and the loss of that possibility is just ooh, it just weighs on you and those little couple sentences like you know the bird boy he didn't make it that family they didn't make it um really hits hard uh in a way that i feel like a lot of games have mismanaged in that bastion does incredibly well it's doing a lot with a little um but yeah so let's see um the fact that you can kind of observe the aftermath of the calamity with a hammer and there's still a place for empathy and heartbreak about having to use the bomb and also a bit of a punch in the gut reminds you that you're not going back uh yeah so nine i will give a heads up that just in case people who are going to be watching the vod later haven't played it if you could drop a, a spoiler or just something in, in front of those because i think all of us in the chat have played this thus far uh but it is uh something that um it, it i don't want to throw it out there just in case folks want to have that full experience if they decide to go back for it not a worry just something maybe we could be mindful of in the chat it's all good uh let's see here um made a happier game need a damn chill pill triggered my depression and shit yeah it gets intense um let's see yeah not a problem you're all good uh all right so let's continue then uh oh let's put that core in apologies for my occasional sniffles by the way it is it is allergy season things are gonna be all right all right Let's talk, Zolf. For Zolf, Ceylambia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city. And he's lived here ever since. It's true. I, this is my, I, I've caught the Rona. This is my, this is my last, uh, couple of weeks to live and I'm going to spend it on Twitch. Uh, as I, I will die as I live. Decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. Let's see. Uh, what have we got to build over here? Oh, wait, it's not there. It's here. Well, look what we have here. Let's see. Uh, memorial. And we'll say... Sure. There's the new video. Yeah, so you pay respect to the old world and burn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. I also like um, how they do frame like the various kind of challenges and achievements uh, by something like a memorial and remembering what's been lost. I think that that's a very interesting little touch that they've added here. Words can't express what happened.
Your cider will toughen you right up. Too bad about the musty aftertaste. And haven't gotten anything new for this. check whether or not I've got something new for the hammer yet. If I have a proving ground, I might go there. More cores near the edge of the city. Cinder brick, pith orchard. There's bastion, proving ground. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this is the one with the bowl. Right. Sure, why not? Let's go there. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Oh, wait a minute. Interesting. All right. Folks used to make pilgrimage here, pay their respects to Pith and the bowl. Well, the gods are long gone now. Orchard core is long gone too. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. That's interesting. So Fun fact, when I initially played this, I didn't really look at much of the stuff in the pack. So it's interesting looking at it now that they've decided to keep various different lore items um, in there as inventory, kind of in a very like Pokemon red, blue, yellow sort of way. Um, and also just kind of this little statue, this little kid doesn't really say anything about it, just like, that was a kid who had a life once, and now it's gone. So I think it's little images like that that are very powerful. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Break this. I think got a couple of fragments for it. Pith makes a decent scarecrow at least. Alright, yeah, cool. Pith not Pith not cool. Up. Not cool, dude. Sure, you know what? Let's take a little bit of a challenge. Yep, yeah, no, no, okay. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Oh, I am out of tonic. Well. Oh, you had more health than I thought you did. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pit put a scare in him. Come on. Oh. Ain't gonna 
stab weeds. Don't want to go through there. At least I don't think I do. Come on. Oh, note that I already deflected back. Cool. That doesn't suck. I don't hate that. Kid ain't found the core. At least he found Zolk's precious shrine. Death orchard. The place is a dead end in more ways than one. Alright, well. I don't think there's anything else for me to. Hmm. Gonna head out. Here's a how now fun, y'all. Thank you very much, Follow My Blade. I hope that you have a lovely evening. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> transistor can never be happy again. Story, out. yeah. There's uh, the stories will stick with you. Um, <laughs> Calamity is a Pompeira, which is great. Yeah, no, all of the you have your like Pepe Silva board just being like all the strings strung between everything. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. I don't think that I can upgrade anything yet. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. This is the time where I do my customary uh, Read the Craft sequence by Max Gladstone. It's my favorite fantasy series and has my favorite interpretation of gods, spirituality, their connection to magic, their significance to culture. It's, it's so good. And the whole sort of like taking gods that were spiritually significant and powerful to people and kind of turning them into resources to have control or power or like toys and things like that um yeah that's a that's a through line that i feel like is getting more play nowadays um let's see here so bang repeater i might actually go and see if i can upgrade this Reload. Let's turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. Okay. And yeah, I've got so much money, I'll be fine. Uh 20% crit chance, that doesn't suck. That blade shines like a light. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see here. Uh Alright, where am I going now? Up in there. Bullhead court. Uh, yeah, no, it's delightful. It's also, like, it's a series where most of the characters are uh, queer POC. It's mostly women. Uh, there's several trans individuals who are, like, core to the story. Um, yeah, and it's, like, pretty much the only one where I've really seen that's like that. Uh, that isn't, like, explicitly one culture. Or kind of like drawing from that like for instance um, I'm also a big fan of uh, Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi, Tomi Adeyemi of course um, uh, NK Jemison I'll have to actually look up the pronunciation of her name so I can make sure that I do it correctly um, but there is a surprising sensitivity to a lot of influences of um, uh, Pacific Islander uh, nations and cultures to um, kind of various different uh, Muslim and West African traditions, or rather Arabic, uh, Muslim, West African traditions uh, in the craft sequence. Uh, there is a surprising diversity of influences and a sensitivity for all of them. So yeah, it's, it's very, very, very good. Uh, yeah, let's go to Bullhead Court. Let's deflect some stuff with the shield. The accused always got a fair shake in Ceylonia. Some used to take the bullhead trial. Survive right. the trial without taking a scratch and walk away a free man. Come on.
trial taught folks three things. First, good defense is a good offense. Second, you gotta always watch your back. Third, ain't no godlike bull up there to save you. Alright, this is gonna be the tricky bit. Okay, didn't quite get that. Really just gotta deflect one and then get out of the way. Come on. Come on. There we are. Come on. One more time. He's so bitty. Trying to do that with no hits is rough. I'm gonna try that one more time though. I was starting to do pretty court is back in session for the kid. Old ritual for when folks believe there was this godlike bull watching over him. And I do nothing but a shield. Got that. We counter you, we counter you. There we are. There we go. Okay. It's getting the timing down. Whoa. Do it once. There we go. Yeah, I won't go for the big prize on this because that's going to be possibly real grindy. Oh, jeez. Okay. There we are. He'll breathe in like once and then do that. All right, cool. Didn't quite get it that time. Come on, dude, really? The kid pulls through in five forms. All right, cool. So we got the bronze and silver prizes. That's enough for now. Sound and recommendation. Gaming score fanfare has well, pretty great videos on Supergiant and Ori music. Try. Doesn't go super hard on musical theory. Focuses more on the score versus interaction with the game mechanics. Very neat. I will make sure and keep that in mind. I'm going to have to start, start a queue because I've got a couple of different things to check out.
Uh, okay, cool. So I've got nothing else to build or upgrade here. Um, I might put my repeater back though, because I like my bow. Once I get the blunderbuss though, I remember that was a, a favorite of mine for a while. Come on. All right. Uh, yeah, because we got the fang repeater. We got that. We got this. And this is the next story area. Cool. There's only one way to cinder brick portal. The hard way. All right. Cool. Let's do it. Sure, the city marshals may be gone, but now the force crawling with wooden bags. Thank you. Anything over here? Nope. Anything hiding behind here? Nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. See, now these are reminding me of the witches from uh, from Hades. How we just have all of the different various variations on the turrets and stuff. Come on. There you go. Wham. Kids ready for the windbags this time. Alright, come on. Shoot me. Interesting. care for that. The wind bags put the kid on notice. Hmm, interesting. Come on. What are you what? Stop. Are you shooting yourself? Stop shooting yourself. Why are you doing that? That's silly. There we are. I'm trying to remember, does leveling up just increase my damage, or is there actually something tangible that it does? Because I think it increases the number of slots that I can have at the distillery, right? Well, windbags, young and old, keep fighting for the fort. Oh, okay, 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 sir. Right, and I can't block that. Okay. At least the marshals left the kid in the parking lot. There's the blunderbuss or scrap musket. Bags just can't handle something that'll punch clean. Oh no, I've got two shooty things now. Windbags ain't much different from normal ones. All I want to want place to stay in a decent deal. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. You could have gotten got the itchy nose. Get the itchy nose. trying to figure out what killed me when I killed that turret. This is a trap. There's turrets over here, isn't there? No, nope, but there. it doesn't help when I roll off a cliff. No, sir, it does not. Sure can. Uh, 
uh, we're gonna go because hmm. <laughs> I do want something close range and far range but I could just deflect stuff that's far away. And I feel like a lot of the things are gonna be really close up. Uh, yeah, we'll go. I guess it would be pronounced sail hammer and not kale hammer. Cause I'm, I'm thinking kale because I'm thinking like, um, what's his face from uh, Titan A. As for the wind bags. Whose name is spelled similarly. All right, come on. Who's gonna shoot me now? Blame them for one, though. Yep, come on. So many there of those sorry things hold up inside. Ceylandia, right? So, do I have a fave enemy a in Bastion or Hades? That's a good question. I mean, the ones in Bastion don't really have a whole ton of variation. Uh, that's a very good question. I don't know if I do. Because I don't spend a whole ton of... Whoop, sorry. Gotta blow you all up. Thank you. Uh, I don't spend a whole ton of time thinking about the enemies too much. Um, hmm. It'll probably be something from Hades if it's anything. Let's see. <laughs> Let me just think about this while I deflect these projectiles. Wait, wait, how am I... What am I getting hit with? Times like this, kids gladly pack trip lines. Am, am I? I'm just gonna... Can I do this? Bye. Fire, fire bad. No kids fresh out of health ties. Yeah, it's not good. Come on, you gonna shoot me? Nope, just fire. Oh, okay then. It's gonna be slow going, I think. Well, that was just kind of a waste, I think. On me. I should have grabbed my bow. Yeah, come on. Thank you. Kid ain't afraid to get burned. Don't really have a whole ton of choice. Real close and just set this off. That'd be lovely. And I'm just gonna drop that there. It's a secret clue that will help. 
help us later. Oh, really? Okay. I will literally forget that, like, the gas bags are there because they get so small, but they're still alive. And he just, alright, cool, you're just gonna wily coyote yourself off that cliff. I don't hate it. Uh, Marshall's badge. Yeah, Marshall's badge, but not like this. Yeah, cop badge. This little cannon boy over here didn't even get to participate. Let me just get the money. Get the money. Oh, want one of those. It might be the end of the level, but hey. No one will tell me that I am not thorough. The skyway is a sight. Let's see. Favorite enemy in Hades. Um, Kid shows up just as Zolf's telling me about his own journey to As much as they're a pain in the ass, I enjoy the Exalted. Uh, the Exalted, I like their moveset. Um, except for the, the shield ones are just way too much of a pain in the ass. I like the spear ones, though. I like Seems their the art design and stuff. Save for Zolf was the smoking pipe. Right, and that's the flashback thingy. The marshal seemed like good man, he says. They treated him with dignity. So, there's... It's interesting playing this with, you know, an additional decade plus worth of experience, or life experience under my belt, that there's a lot of kind of narratives about nationalism and potentially racism as well in this game that I maybe didn't give a whole ton of in-depth reflection on. Uh, so it will be very interesting to see if that continues to be the case. Um, or, you know, rather, it continues to be the case whether or not I have more to be able to add to that. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor kid collapses after just one drag. All right, one flash bag, one flash bag, bag, flash back pipe. All right. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past is history. This is one of the challenge things, I think. We can do that. Whoa, okay. Okay. You're spicy. You're a sassy boy. The past catches up with the kid. Hardly had a moment's rest since all this started. Alright, this is this is familiar. This is coming back to me. Ugh. Yeah, they'll just yeet themselves off a cliff. Fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. Learning the tells on the animations when you have a whole bunch of enemies who are basically variations on one another is very challenging. Man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like you. Fire. Yep, you're fire. Fire bad. As we've already established. 
having his mama's heir to the kid no favors while he was growing up. But he learned to hold his own out there. Oh no, you're just gonna shoot your goo at me. Well, that is very rude, sir. And I don't much care for it at all. And there's a lot of surface area for you to eat bullets, so we can make that happen. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Jeez, okay, alright, we went into hard mode. You're just gonna. You're just gonna walk and fucking snail trail your way across here, aren't you? I'm gonna get knocked out by this. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. Ah, okay. You're both very large. this yeah there it goes oh no okay cool I would really okay This is not too much damage. The city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found either. Alright. I remember one of the things that was a little bit irritating about this game is the the three-quarter view was not super great for when you had levels like this so what the kid do why he went right on back to the walls for another five years it's not super great for telling you where you can and can't step both enjoy that. Yeah, trip mine is money. Especially for spatial management. Well, speaking of which. In time, the kid earned good standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. Yeah, didn't even see that hole. Okay, okay. Okay, I don't don't much care for this at all. Oop.
this part's gonna be a pain in the ass. Die! There. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered, cracked, and split apart. Oh my god. There's so many enemies. Super cool, you don't have to worry about the ground blowing up. That's super, super cool. Can I deflect that? No, I cannot. Okay. You saw nothing where the world used to be. Oh, my goodness. Just like that. Alright, no, we got another, we got another challenge. Tonics left. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. <sighs> oh my goodness. They did not screw around with the challenge rooms. Guess we're just doing this. Alright, that's cool. That's fine. I can handle it. No big deal. Yeah, you're the fast boy. Yeah. Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. Oh, no. Sure. Oh, yeah. This is, uh... This is no bueno. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, that was... I forgot how long those rooms are. Holy moly. When they mean 18 reflections, like, oh yeah, 18 waves of enemies that are progressively harder remaining. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. There's a very ambiguous moral position that the game seems to take about the Ura, um, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it yet, upon reflection. Because it's that sort of like, well, we treated them poorly, but, uh, you know, but it still wasn't okay that they, etc, etc, avoiding po spoilers. Um, yeah, there's especially kind of the way that they're Asian-coded, um, makes me feel a little bit uneasy, so we're gonna have to see whether or not that's, yeah, we're gonna have to see. That's, I might, ugh. Kids ready to get real personal with hammer and musket in hand. We might do, I think we might do musket and bow, actually. So we'll go... Musket and Breaker's Bow for short range and long range. Uh, did a lot of work on the cameras. They even built a specific way to move the camera for transistor. Yeah, this is very much the unpolished diamond of which, you know, hey, it was their first really big game. So that makes sense. But yeah, no, those sorts of areas where like with the progressively constructed ground, and then having areas that you can fall through. Uh, it wasn't super visually clear for a while, and I remember that being a frustration when I uh, when I did that before. Uh, let's go Lost and Found. The Lost and Found. Here, kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. Graver Slash uh, requires tonic, something coarse. Uh, how much do I have? I have a ridiculous amount of... All it of... takes is some fragments, and the Bastion makes it good as new. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, let's see. Bronze Spyglass, uh, Crystal Barrette, Whale Ale, damage using secret skills, that might come in handy. Health Tonics fully restore health. Yes. 100 damage counter blocking. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna... 
have some use from that. Bastion bourbon, yep. It's all coming back to me now, I remember this. So yeah, uh, for those of you uh, who's got this bow ready to get at, <laughs> is it Monster Hunter? Yeah, no, I Fatalis I'm sure would be very cute, much more cute in this if, uh, if Fatalis ever showed up. But hey, that's a suggestion for Drawfee if they ever want to do one of those, like, draw this game's characters in another game's style is like draw monster hunter monsters in the style of bastion is like all right that's kind of cool also hello sin thank you very much for joining us tonight uh how are you doing are we getting ready for some more uh monster prom monday because i hear i hear tell that uh there is another monster hunter monster hunter monster prom coming out and since you are the monster prom person uh, I am very excited to see if you maybe get to take a look at that, because that'd be very interesting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, sentimental value, whale ale, um, we'll leave that for now, because I do want to upgrade some of these. Something coarse. Swim four. Range and less spread. Because I, I have my ranged weapon with my bow. So I might go spread. You want to tune a scrap musket, you start with a barrel. Uh, shots cause greater knockback. Uh, now nah, we're going to go raw damage, he thinks. The marshals learn to pack those shells for a fire. Alright, and. What does my bow look like? Can I get anything more of something stringy? I can. And I might as well grab this too. Got more money than God right now. Oh geez, had I not upgraded that at all? Uh, crit chance. Greater force on impact. Sure. Let's go. Oh, do we? No, I did upgrade that. Okay, I just don't have enough money now. Alright, that's fine. And I have this stuff for something stringy. Got 50% damage. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Since yet you are not because of vacation, but we will play Monster Prom next week until morale improves. Awesome! Well, I'm glad that you're having a lovely evening. I'm also gonna have to find someone else to raid now, so that will be very interesting to see who's on tonight, who's floating around. Um, do I have another area? Ooh, we have a scrap musket one. Let's see what's going on over there. <laughs> Ever felt as old with good, like picking up broken glass barehanded. As old would grow, marshals learn to make every shot count. Guess we're gonna go. The trick was to pop all those nasty gourds without wasting ammo. Most marshals didn't get far on their first few tries. Right, I can knock them off. Uh, I forgot that I could do that. I gotta get the upgrade that gives me more knack back for that, I think. Funny thing about muskets is they work best up close. Thank you, narrator. I believe I am aware. Oh, come on. I had one left. Alright. Oh, okay. Story mode bay's on tonight. We can do that. Let's see. Did I get any prizes? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. I uh, can I? Because I'm pretty sure that I can probably do that if I have some different mods on my shotgun. <laughs> Marshals did more than just stand around shooting. Uh, let's see, so we're going to change out the mods on my scrap musket. So, greater knockback. Uh, let's see. Do we want to go ranger spread for the proving ground? That's a tough one. Um, mm -hmm. Minus 50% spread is a lot, though. Uh, sure. Let's go greater knockback and less spread, or sorry, more spread, less range. So let's give that one more shot. <laughs> but otherwise, how is your vacation going, Sin? I hope that you are having uh, a lovely, relaxing time and doing some of that excellent self-care that we talk about. So, no, nope. over here. Okay, that's a bunch of those gone. And they're gonna go. Nope. Come on, really? There we are. Plenty of gores to go around. Them up close. You really notice how Supergiant has refined their aiming in subsequent games? Really? Alright. Marshals like to fine tune their muskets to get better results. <laughs> It's like playing pool. Oh, can we please, please figure out, can I? I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Oh, yes! The best of the best to clear the course in just a few shots. Cool. Got that for free. I don't hate that. Just barely under it, too. Just barely. Alright. I didn't think I was going to get that last trick shot. That was that was tough. Especially since the aim locks to one, you and you can't really cycle through them way. as easily as you can otherwise. Um, let's see here. Uh, we might actually just go and just say... That's a lot of damage. All right. Uh, there we go. And we might do one more story area, I think, before we head off for the evening. But yeah, this has been a, a delightful new kind of, you know, a revisiting of a game that is very near and dear uh, to my heart. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the calamity sank it all. Oh, my goodness. Maybe all that oh, we have the birds. I remember the birds. Your stab weeds. Riverbank swarming with wind bags. They were so bent on finding the core, they hardly noticed the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous fairy lodge is still in the I would like for my fairy barge to not stab me, thank you. You send some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. You gonna shoot me too? Maybe she can slip right no? past All right, cool. on the coast. Or maybe not. The security skiff pulls up port side. Nelly's just another windbag to those guns. Oh wow, you have a lot of HP. Holy moly. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. Alright, 
Like this got complicated quick. Gonna shoot me next. Well, weep it, Nelly tries harder. Try as she might, though, she hits a snag. Kids Whoop. gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. At least she picked a good spot for a break. It's the core. Is it a hundred flapping wings? Because I think it's a hundred flapping wings. Okay. Yup, yeah, no. None of this fucking Alfred Hitchcock bullshit. They had their own eyes on the core. But why? Well, kid ain't got time to think it over just yet. He finds Weep and Nelly in the the control. Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the water's getting rough. Oh, okay, cool. We got guns now. I don't hate that. Y'all, super giant, level with me here. Did you really have to call them peckers? There's just like, there's there's no other better name for an avian enemy that you could have chosen. Maybe one that is not a euphemism for penis. Vandalism. Peter Walters is gonna be mad. Well, it all proves too much for poor Nelly. She's just gotta make one last Bye. stop. With the last breath, Nelly gets the kid in solid ground. Sounds like he's unhappy for solid ground. <laughs> Come on, come on. Okay, for real though? Let me get my... I actually get my timing for the parry on this. And then actually fell off a couple more. Now, listen close. You should remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Oh, this is the jungly area for the first time. I remember this. Ta talented. Mm hmm. Used to take an enterprise in hand for a plain old fool to venture out that far. They're, they're surprisingly, like, I don't know if it's that sort of thing of, you know, we have a budgeted amount of effort and we're going to put it into everything else and, like, the names are, eh, they're not great, but it's like, these are shooters and these enemies that hit you are called, like, 
the hitters, and it's like, all right, y'all, really, this is the best? And they're like, dude, it's 11.35 on a Friday. Like, these are not going to be our top material. Do you want amazing soundtracks, great characters, and all the gameplay? Cool. Then shut the fuck up about how our names aren't that good. And it's like, that's fair. That's entirely fair. All right, do you still have, like, poison fog, or are you done now? Okay, cool. And that's why you go to Prosper Blood. Alright, we'll probably finish off this level, because I didn't think that that barge level was going to be a two-parter, but we shall see. If they ever get here, something he ain't heard in a long while. Uh, okay, well, I didn't think that the Switch would do How's that. Go again? Uh, for those of you who have not played Bastion, but have played Hades... You may recognize yeah, the voice of Eurydice. Yeah, okay. Stop. Don't spit at me. Rude. Rachel Barrett, yep. Arguably the voice of Supergiant, honestly. Yeah, thank you, I know how to defend Ying. Okay, are we... Alright. Clips apparently. Yep. The shade exactly. The like once you get hit six times. Oh hi! Did you did you forget how to use a shield? Like no no thank you. Come on. I'll take the currency. I also like the build up, I guess you could call it. Like, you know, you know that you're supposed to head in a certain direction, but it's not, you know, your your map has a thing that says, go here. It's like, no, you're just accompanied by this, this very nice, soothing voice. And, you know, once again, we, Sin, this is before you, you came into chat, but we were discussing how one of the earlier levels is very narratively heavy you're shown effectively the corpses of all of the people who died in this calamity and all that's been lost in terms of their joy and their hope for the future that when you reach this point oh you have a lot of hp you actually have a health bar um that when the narrator says you know narrator i never pronounce it that way when the narrator says you know something he hasn't heard in a long time the music and art and beauty is definitely especially poignant given the pa the counterpoint of the the feelings of loss and tragedy that are communicated very well um not too long before this point in the game um it's like I've I've said it enough times that it's probably my catchphrase at this point. But uh, narrative, good narrative, in my opinion, requires ebb and flow. So if everything is very heavy and very um, serious for a very long time without any kind of alleviation of that, 
um, it can be exhausting and it can feel very monotonous. So this um, counter counter rhythm, I guess, if you want to call it that. Come on, no, come on! I didn't step on the stinky mushroom. Don't, don't give me that. Oh, you want to go away now? Oh, okay. Oh, we done? Yeah, I got an arrow for you. Anyways, um, let's see. Now, where am I supposed to go from here? Am I going to get a path? Nope. All right. There you go. All right. Um. Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. They'll be here before too long. All right. I think, uh, I can't really think of a better place to end off on that for tonight. So I think this, uh, happy little reunion will be the ending note on the stream for tonight. Um, thanks everybody who dropped by, whether or not you came by later on in the stream or have been here the whole time. Uh, I appreciate you, and I appreciate you deciding to spend your time and to spend your time with us here exploring this old classic game. Um, for I will be playing it on Friday as well before we start getting into Ori and the Blind Forest in November. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you had a good time. Uh, if this was your first time experiencing the game, or if you're uh, a grizzled veteran coming back to it, I hope that my commentary and gameplay added something to the experience for you. And uh, yeah, maybe even prompted the desire to go back and do another playthrough yourself. Um, but I will say, I, I think that we are going to see if uh, Miss Story Mode Bay is indeed streaming tonight. And, uh, what? Yes, okay, she is. So we're gonna go say hi to Story Mode Bay and we'll see what she's playing tonight. Uh, but until then, I hope that everybody has a lovely week and we'll see you on Friday. Take care of yourselves, love each other, and uh, we hope to see you then and have a lovely evening.